Good morning, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee, with your daily devotional. I'm going to draw again from uh, this reading, set of readings by William Still. It's called Through the Year with William Still. He was an uh, expository Bible teacher for some 50 years over in Scotland. Uh, just since most of you won't be familiar with him, let me just give a little bit of this uh, information from the inside cover. William Still was the minister of Gil Compton South Church, Aberdeen, from 1945 to 1997. Amazing. His name may not feature in the official annals of the Church of Scotland. It is doubtful whether any other individual in his church during the latter half of the 20th century had such a profound or widespread influence for over 50 years. Uh, he pioneered a single-minded commitment to expository preaching and congregational prayer, which made Gil Compton a beacon of Reformed and Evangelical Christianity in Scotland. So really powerful. Uh, he was a man whose very life breathed the grace and love of God. No one who ever met him, received his counsel, or sat under his ministry could have escaped the sheer Christ-likeness of Mr. Still's life. In the early days of his ministry, he wrote this, there is no part of me or of my life that I will withhold from the work that God has called me to. So really, a uh, great man of God uh, leaves behind a wonderful legacy. Uh, this book is a little hard to find, but occasionally on the internet, you can find a used copy uh, or some bookstore that has one that just hadn't sold before. But I want to take uh, one of his daily readings. This one, uh, he focuses on Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. This is part of the Sermon on the Mount, the most famous sermon the world has ever known. And uh, in particular, uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, which contain the Sermon on the Mount. Um, this little section talks about salt and light and uh, our role in the world as the church, as Christ representatives. I think you'll find it inspiring as I did. First, uh, the verses from the Bible. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? And so remind you, this is Jesus speaking. Uh, he's gone up the side of the hill. That's why it's called the Sermon on the Mount. His disciples have followed him. Uh, they're the ones that were willing to make the, the trek to follow him up the hill. And he sat down there, we're told, and he uh, began to teach his disciples. Began with the Beatitudes, as most of you will remember. Um, not the list of requirements for salvation, but the list of the results of salvation. What the, what the Christian or Christ-like character looks like uh, in a person who has followed Jesus, who has committed their life to Jesus. And part of that is that we are similar or compared to salt and light. And he says, if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. Then he says to his disciples, you are the light of the world. And Jesus himself is the light of the world. But if we're followers of Jesus, if we have surrendered all of who we are to all of who he is, what he's saying is that we become little mini reflectors of his light. Uh, in this world. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people uh, light a lamp and put it under a bowl or, or cover it over. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. It's not let your light shine before men so they can think you're a really nice Southerner. It's not let your light shine before men so that you can feel puffed up and appreciated. And now it's, it's all about God and God's glory. And see, this gives us a purpose in life that's much greater than the self. And I know our world that we live in right now is all about focusing in on the self um, and, and whether or not, you know, the self is being satisfied or not. And the problem with that is that it's, it's, a, it's a never ending sort of treadmill that just goes nowhere. Uh, we were created with eternity uh, in our hearts, and we were created in such a way that our lives might be used to glorify God. Well, anyway, William still goes on just for a couple paragraphs. It's a very short reading, and I'll 
finish up with that. In a sense, Christian witness can be seen as salt or as light. Christian witness as salt affects the life of the community, whereas a light, uh, as a light, it attracts attention to Christ and to his church. Salt behaves negatively, curbing evil and cleansing society from corruption. And they used to use in old times when they didn't have a refrigeration, they used salt to preserve meat, to sort of fight back the decay or, uh, or the rotting of, of meat and fish and that sort of thing. So um, he says salt behaves negatively, curbing evil and cleansing society from corruption. It was also a cleansing agent. Light behaves positively, showing forth the virtues of Christ to those who have eyes to see. Note that Christ first says, I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. And then he says, you are the light of the world. We are to shine with his light for ours is a derived light as the moon's light is but a reflection of the dazzling light of the sun. It is vital to believe this is possible. Indeed, it is so possible that Jesus says the Christian who shines his light is a city set on a hill which cannot be hidden. And you've, you've come over a hillside on a, on a highway like I have in, in, in the evening or in the dark hours of the day. And there it is, you know, that city in the distance that you're wait, you can't wait to get there. You know, I remember when we were on the road for 18 years, just couldn't wait to get home to Nashville. And uh, we'd see sometimes coming home at night, we'd see the, the lights of the city in the distance. It would just give us so much hope and know that know, we knew we were getting closer to home. Uh, we knew that our, our long journey was, was soon coming to an end and we could rest and recover, you know. So can the light be hidden, still asks. Why would Jesus say, let your light shine? If it is not possible to hide it as the moon's light can be hidden by dark clouds, it is possible, but it is wrong to hide it. A light is for shining. That's for you, that's for me to know, right? The light that Christ has shown on us and in us is to be shared the light of Christ in the soul, in the soul, Jesus says in verse 16, draws attention to the light's source, not to the person in whose life it is shining. For the light shines not to be seen like a flashlight, but so that others may see the Father and give him the praise. Wow, that's awesome. Let's pray. Lord, thank you this day. Pray that our light may shine before others. Not that they might glorify us, not that we might get the applause, not that we might get the attention, but that, Lord, they might be drawn to you, to see Jesus, um, and to know him, uh, to know him as Savior, Redeemer, and Lord. Um, pray that would be true and real in all of our lives. Lord, just flow through us, we pray. Blossom the May the, may the life of Christ and the light of Christ just reflect out of our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.